How's it going guys? So the term evolution has a broad meaning in today's culture and when discussing evolution it can range from so many different meanings. From cosmic evolution all the way to macroevolution. So it is always important to define what you are discussing. In this video I will only be talking about microevolution to macroevolution and will not be discussing origins. Although it is important to have an origin point when discussing the existence of life. However, there are many evolutionists that deny the need for a beginning. So, I will only be addressing when life was already here and onwards. Microevolution, or otherwise known as variations, is small changes within a family of kinds. Such examples that we look at is different sized beaks on finches, you have different fur on dogs, resistance to certain drugs in bacteria, etc. It is small changes that is already present within the gene code. For instance, we have wolves and dogs being different species, but they are the same kind of animal and can still interbreed. Macroevolution, however, is claimed as an accumulation of microevolution over a longer period of time, ultimately resulting in bacteria changing or evolving to a human being over many changes and long periods of time. Macroevolution claimed that all plants and animals are related to one another and ultimately came from one point, known as a single cell, to all varieties today. Evolutionists believe that because we can observe microevolution, we can accept macroevolution. Now, is that assumption fact based? Is it reasonable and scientifically acceptable to assume fact A proves B? To answer this question, we have to understand how microevolution works and what is needed to go from micro to macro. Obviously, to go from a bacteria to a human being would require many, many changes. Now, the word science comes from Latin, meaning knowledge or to know through observation and experimentation. Now, can we know and observe microevolution? And the answer is yes, we can. There are many different species of rabbits in the world and we can observe these micro changes within the rabbits and see that they are different but ultimately still the same kind of family of animal. Now, can these changes go as far as the rabbit not being a rabbit anymore in the distant future? And right there is where the whole argument starts for evolution. Evolutionists believe that it can, but is that then really part of science? Do we actually observe or know that it can? When we look at microevolution, we see changes already present within the gene code. Now, for macroevolution to happen, there would have to be an increase in information within the gene code. So, have we ever observed this increase in natural selection? The answer is no. Natural selection selects the traits already present in the animal's gene code that is best needed for it to survive its environment. For example, we have long fur on animals to survive in colder climates like huskies, and then we have animals with shorter fur to survive in hotter climates like dingoes. Those changes to adapt in a certain environment was already present within the animal's gene code. There was no new increase in information. And to go from a bacteria to a human being would require billions of increasing information. Even if there could be an increase in information within the gene code, then that will bring up another argument for where this information is coming from. Especially when it is not intelligently driven. Macroevolution is not part of science and it is an extrapolation from microevolution. Not only is it not observed or tested, but evolutionists would have to argue as to how the DNA can receive an increase in information. Now, we do see micro changes and that is what we should expect according to the Bible, as it states over and over it will bring forth after its kind. Not only is that observed and scientifically correct, but it is also intelligently driven, which is why we see what we see in the world today. It makes logical sense according to the Bible, dogs will produce dogs, rabbits will produce rabbits and plants will produce plants with many varieties, but always the same kind. The fact is, Macroevolution is a belief system operating with great zeal in the majority of the modern scientific community and that worldview will be defended with great fervor as if it was a religion. So another question to look at is why do some scientists accept macroevolution and why is this belief system that is not scientific pushed within the media as fact and science when it is not? The simple answer is because the alternative is not acceptable in the modern scientific community. There is no other worldview except for God created humans and animals and some people do not want to accept that. But there are some who do not know the creation alternative and are being mistaught and misguided into this evolutionary worldview from a young age and have accepted it as fact without question. If you hear it and read it a thousand times over and over through your school life then some people will eventually just accept it without question. I did. 
But then, there are some that know this to be false, but would rather believe the impossible than the obvious, that this existence was created. The Bible does say this would happen, stating it is willful ignorance in 2 Peter 3, and there will be people who will suppress the truth. Author Keith said it best, and I quote, Evolution is unproved and unprovable. We believe it only because the only alternative is special creation, and that is unthinkable. Wow, Keith, you really have an open mind. I know there are some Christians who believe in macroevolution as a means of God creating us, but I encourage you to reconsider that position as it is in complete contradiction to the word of God and truthfully, it's a heresy. God did not use death and suffering to bring forth humans. So, if you have accepted macroevolution as fact, then I challenge you to reconsider your belief system. Do not accept everything that you are being told and ask the questions. Seek for the truth and it will set you free. And the truth is, there is only true freedom in God. Thank you everyone for watching and may you all have a blessed day. Hey guys, please check out these two videos where it is explained much more in depth as to how ridiculous this evolutionary worldview really are. It covers many more topics that I did not cover in this video. Thanks guys. Cheers.